This is a lesson on how to deal with angled surfaces in application with Newton's second law. I will be following the four-step force analysis strategy, including drawing a general sketch as needed, drawing a free body diagram, assigning a coordinate system, and decomposing forces, because we will be applying Newton's second law in two dimensions, which means that we will be applying it in the x direction, independently of applying it in the y direction. So we'll need to decompose our forces in our coordinate system. After that, I'll identify knowns and unknowns and solve algebraically to get a numerical answer. And then I will finally reflect and review any problem solving strategy that seems relevant to point out. The problem I picked out has several parts and I'll work each of them one by one as I move through. This is the block on ramp problem. It reads, a 25 kilogram block sits on a ramp angled at 12 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so I know a mass, M equals 25 kilograms, and I'm going to make a general sketch right away because I have this 12 degree ramp in here, and I'll put that over here. Here is a flat line with a ramp and the mass, and I can note that this angle is 12 degrees in here, and here's my mass M. It says determine the acceleration if the ramp is frictionless. Okay, so for part A, I'm going to note that mu equals zero. Any sort of mu, if it's kinetic or, or static, it's zero. And they're asking me for what's the acceleration. Okay, well, I'm going to draw a free body diagram in order to move into being able to solve this problem. I'm going to draw the free body so that the sides of the body are aligned with my, the sides of my paper here. And so the normal force will be easy to identify. The normal force will always be perpendicular away from the surface. So the normal force points upward. Okay, so that would be in this direction on the picture. The weight will be pointing at an angle with respect to the normal force. So I'm going to draw the weight like this on my free body diagram and label it like this. Okay, And so those are actually the only two forces in this situation, the normal force and the weight. I can assign a coordinate system. I anticipate it's actually going to go down the incline. So I'll make the x direction parallel to the surface of the incline which means that in this picture over here, I have x in this direction and y upward. I'm going to note that my weight needs to be decomposed in this coordinate system. It's at an angle so that I would have a wy component and a wx component. Now based on geometry in here, if this is a 12 degree angle, this also up here, this angle up here is also 12 degrees. So you can see that the x component is the opposite leg, opposite, and the y component is adjacent. So that has implications for uh, when I decompose this force, the weight force can be decomposed into the x component and the y component. So let me do that real quick down here. The x component is opposite over adjacent, so sine of 12 equals wx over w, or I can just say wx equals w sine 12. In a similar manner, I can isolate wy such that I know that wy equals w cosine 12 degrees. Okay, so I have it decomposed in my coordinate system, and I'm ready to move forward towards finding the acceleration. Well, the acceleration is in the x direction, so I'm going to do a net force in the x direction equals mAx. The A I'm trying to solve for, M I was given, over on this side of the equation goes all the forces on the free body diagram that are in the x direction. And when I look at this, the only component is the component of the weight. There's only one component of that force pulling that down the incline. So when I look at this, wx, well, I wrote an equation down for that. That's w sine 
12. And I know W equals MG. I can plug that in there. So I can get MG sine theta or sine 12 equals MA. I can do algebra from now. I get mass canceling on both sides. It reduces to unity. And I get the acceleration equals G sine 12, which is 9.8 sine 12 degrees. I can plug this through the calculator. And when you do this, you get a value of 2.0375. And the units on acceleration is meters per second squared. And that would be the acceleration. I only had to consider that one component of the weight in that direction. So that gives me my answer for part A, determine the acceleration if the ramp is frictionless. Part B says the block does not move. Okay, does not move. That means acceleration equals zero. What is the magnitude of the frictional force exerted on the block from the ramp? Okay, so there's some sort of frictional force and it has to be a static frictional force because the block isn't moving. But I don't know mu s. Mu s is something I don't know. What I do know is that the block's stationary. And it may be that the block is not meeting the minimum or the maximum static frictional force. Mu s times the normal force, right? It's at some point below it. And I don't know what that value is, but I can solve for it. Let's look at a Newton's second law equation for this. Sum of forces in the x direction equals mAx. And I need to add this new force to my free body diagram. So there's a friction force somewhere in my free body diagram. If the weight is trying to pull the block down the incline, that means there's a friction force up the incline holding it up. Does that make sense? They have to, if it wants, the relative motion would be down the incline, so the friction force will oppose that. And I don't know what it is, but I can have it in my free body diagram. And what's going to happen here is, I know the acceleration is zero, so that side of the equation is zero. Over on this side of the equation, I'm going to put all the forces on my free body diagram in the x direction, which again will be this component of the weight which I had over on this equation, but now I have friction in the other direction, the static frictional force. And I, I can't assume it's at a maximum value. It may be and is at some value lower than the maximum value just to hold it at rest. All I need is that acceleration equal to zero. And when I solve this equation, the force of friction static equals the x component of the weight. That's what it is, which I know is mg times sine 12. I can run this, I can put numbers in. The mass is 25, g is 9.8, and then I have sine 12. And I don't even need to know the coefficient of static friction in order to calcul calculate the static friction force. Uh, when you run this through your calculator, well, it'll be 25 times 2 point something. And overall, you get 50.9 three, eight, four newtons. And I can calculate that maximum static friction force without knowing the static friction coefficient because all that static friction force needs to do is overcome the component of the weight. That's all it needs to do. It doesn't need to reach its max value. It just needs to balance this other force out. And I know how to calculate this other force. And so the friction has to be equal to it. Let's move on to the next part of the problem. And what I'm going to do is copy and paste this work I've done onto the next page. And we can work from there. OK, so there's our diagram that we have before. We have a static frictional force. Part C says, if the coefficient of static friction between the ramp and the box is 0.33. OK, so now they give me the coefficient of static friction. Mu s equals 0 0.33. OK, now I know it. Um, and that would help me find a max static frictional force, right? The static frictional force is less than or equal to mu s times n. And when it reaches a max value, it will equal mu s times n. I don't need mu s in order to solve it for it less than this maximum value, but I do need it to solve for this maximum value. 
It says at what angle, okay, so I have a new angle. M is still 25, but theta equals some unknown value. I don't know what it is. At what angle must the ramp be inclined for the block to just begin to slide down the ramp? So what's happening is I'm going to increase this angle, this 12 degree angle. I'm going to increase it, increase it until this block starts slipping down the ramp. And at that situation with my free body diagram, I don't have 12 degrees in here anymore. It's some other value and I can get rid of that in there. What I do have is now the static frictional force is a max value. When I increase that angle, I'm going to increase that static frictional force until a maximum value when it just begins to slide. There's a critical point going on and that tells me to use the maximum value. So for part C here, uh, I seems like I'm ready to set up an equation to be able to solve for it. I'm going to also note I need the normal force in order to calculate the static frictional force. So I'm going to do a force analysis in the y direction first in order to figure out what the normal force is. So this net force in the y direction has to equal MAY. There's no motion in the y direction. The, the box, the block is not leaving the surface or sinking into the surface. It's only moving along the surface. So in the y direction, the acceleration is zero. The other forces in the y direction I'm going to know is the normal force is upward. And then downward, notice down here the x component of, or the y component of the weight is downward, minus wy. A knee jerk sort of thing there is just to put the weight that the normal force equals the weight. But we can see in this situation, the weight has a component down the incline which means that there's only a component into the incline. The normal force doesn't have to hold the whole thing up. Okay, So we will get the normal force, and on the previous slide we did this. The normal force will equal W cosine theta. We don't know what theta is, and we know value for m, and we can take that expression for n and put it in here and know our, how to an expression for our maximum static friction and force. Now that I have that done, I'm going to do the x dimension separately. Remember, we have two dimensions, so it gets done separately. Uh, if it's just beginning to slide down the ramp, this means that it's just barely moving or just barely not moving, and we're going to approximate the acceleration at this critical point to be zero still. In the x direction, we're going to note that in the x direction, I still have the component of the weight down the incline, Wx, and then the maximum static force is pointing up the incline, and I'll write that in here. Maximum static frictional force. Those two have to be equal to each other at this angle. The weight and the friction force um, oppose each other and are equal in order for it to just barely be sitting still. I can plug in what I know about the weight. The weight in the x direction is W sine theta or mg sine theta. I'm going to set that equal to the maximum static frictional force, which I know is mu s times n. Mu s I can leave there, and n I calculated up here, mg cosine theta. Okay, so I have an equation set up. And I'm asked to find the angle theta. And here's a trick when you have sine and cosine proportional to one another, is to divide by cosine on both sides, and you can get tangent. Tangent of an angle equals the sine of the angle over the cosine of the angle. That's a nice identity to use in here. I'm also going to divide by mg in order to um, have that those terms reduce to unity. So over on the right side, the left side of the equation here, I get tan theta. And over on the right side, I get mu s. So I can say theta is the arctan of mu s. Well, I can plug that into the calculator. Theta equals the arctan of 0.33. I'll get an angle less than 45 because it's less than 1. If it's 1, that's a 45 degree angle. 
And overall, I get theta equals 18.2629 degrees. You could say 18 degrees, depending on the number of um, significant figures. And that's the answer for this question. I'm going to note I had to use two equations in the two different dimensions, and that my normal force was not equal to just the weight. There's only a component of the weight, and that was significant for being able to solve for this angle. The last part of this problem has the ramp inclined at 30 degrees. So I'm going to copy and paste our picture from before, this, the sketch and free body diagram that we had. And um, we no longer have 12 degrees, and it's not even the 18 degrees from the other part. This is a 30 degree angle, so I'll write 30 degrees in here. Now we know the angle, it's 30 degrees in there. The ramp is inclined at 30 degrees, and we know definitely it will slide down, right? The, the critical angle for it to slide down to overcome static friction was 18 degrees. And now we're at 30, so it's definitely going to slide down. And another thing I'm going to note is that now we're moving. It has kinetic friction. So instead of the static friction force in here, I'm going to put a kinetic friction force. And remind you, in order to calculate the friction that's kinetic, we take mu k times the normal force. Okay. And they give us mu k. They say mu k equals 0.23. And I'm going to remember from my force analysis from the previous slide on part C, we got that the normal force is the equal to the y component of the weight, which was mg cosine of the angle. In this case, it's 30. All right. So when I solve this problem, what are they asking for? If the block is nudged to overcome static friction, what is the resulting acceleration? So we're definitely accelerating down the incline if it's been nudged so that it'll move. So I'm going to do a force analysis in the x direction and know that the acceleration is what I'm going to be solving for. What is the acceleration? I know the mass is still 25 kilograms. Okay. So in the x direction, I'll leave ma over here. I'm solving for a. In the x direction, I can write out what I know. Well, I still have the x component of the weight down the incline, and now I have the kinetic friction force up the incline, and those are the only two forces. I'm solving for acceleration, so I'm going to plug in what I know. Um, the x component of the weight is mg sine 30. The kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force, and I know the normal force is mg cosine 30, so I'll write that in there. Mu k times mg cosine 30, and that has to equal ma. Well, looking at some algebra in this problem, if I divide each term by m, I can uh, cancel that term out of all of them and reduce it to unity. And I get the acceleration will equal g, and then I'm going to factor the g out of each term. I'm left with sine 30 in the first term, and a minus mu k cos 30 in the second term. Of course, I can plug in numbers in here. I know g, and I know the kinetic friction coefficient. It's 0.23. That was a given value. And overall, when I run this through the calculator, I get a value of 2.94798 meters per second squared. 2.95, 2.9, and that would be the answer for this last part. Again, we're making note that the normal force is not just the weight. I do a analysis in the y direction to see that it's only a component of the weight. The other component of the weight is what's pulling it down the incline. The acceleration is larger than the acceleration that I found before when it was frictionless, but it was at a smaller angle then. This is definitely a larger angle, and so it, I believe it that would move at a larger acceleration than the first part.